two, one. All right, so welcome back. So normal distribution continued. Now, what I wanna be uh, doing in this particular example is, what if you are given um, basically a data set? So it's, a, it's through some kind of sampling, it doesn't matter what it was. So clearly, you know, you're gonna have a certain amount of data points. Now, ideally you'd wanna have, you know, the more the better. Um, what if from that data set you would wanna be able to model and uh, try to create, a, you know, a normal distribution. So make an assumption that your sampling that you have done and the collection of all the data actually is a normal distribution if you had you know infinite number of data points. Now we're never gonna get an infinite number of data points no matter what we do, but we can certainly make okay, the assumption that possibly okay, it is normally distributed. So what's the benefit of that? Well, the normal distribution we know quite a lot about. We can calculate probabilities from it, so that's always great. Okay, we can calculate all kinds of wonderful things with regards to um, probabilities, how they're distributed, standard deviations, you know, where they are. So in this video, that's what I wanna do. I wanna take a data set. Now it's gonna be an interesting one, so it's one that I'm uh, interested in. Okay, it's gonna be kind of from the stock market. You know, we're gonna take it over, you know, quite a lot of years, you know, over 50 years of data points and then see you know, what the mean is, what the standard deviation is, and then we'll make the assumption that you know, uh, if this continued on forever, you know, we would have our kind of stock market normally distributed around our mean, all right? So as you can see here, you know, we're gonna need the data points. Those, so what I'm going to assume that my data points are the actual percentage returns in a particular year from the S&P 500, okay? So the S&P 500 is one of the more well-known, okay, indices that we have, okay, that actually models about 500 top companies in the US. Now, so if you forgot indices, okay, maybe, you know, I'll put up a link up above there. I did one with regards to creating an index actually, okay, but it's not really needed for this. So our point is we have over 50 okay, samples where we have the returns for every single year from the stock market. And then I wanna be able to calculate the mean. I wanna be able to calculate the standard deviation. And then I'm gonna ask a few questions if we were thinking about probabilities, okay? So that's gonna be our goal. Now, what is my you know data set that I have? Well, so, I like to follow this particular company, which is Berkshire Hathaway, okay, so from Warren Buffett, and in his letters, he actually has, so all the way from 1965, so not the first column, those are his returns, but the second column is basically the overall market or the S&P 500 for regards to the top 500 companies. So as you see there, it's 1965, and on the right-hand side, there was a return of 10%. 1966, there was a, in brackets, so that means it was a negative return of 11.7, so the stock market lost. Then in the following, it was, you know, 30.9%, and 11.0%, and negative 8.4%. And it has it, okay, for every single year from 1965 all the way up, okay, as you can see there, okay, until 2001 at the bottom. 28.7. Now, what happened this year, okay, because I'm making this video in 2022, this is actually in October, uh, well, it's been a disaster. <laughs> so I'm going to add that. I don't know. This year hasn't ended, so we don't know how bad it's going to be, but it's at least, I think, negative 25, negative 26% or something of that nature. So I'm going to just add it in, okay, just so that you don't think that, you know, it's been magically beautiful all the way through. So in order to do that, um, and in order to calculate my mean and standard deviations, you know, so what I have, okay, so you can take any spreadsheet. So I inputted this in from 1965, 
um, and all the way down. So it just keeps going and going and going. And then, you know, I did include 2022 and that was negative 26. That's what I put for it. I don't think it's negative 26 at the moment, but you know, let's assume okay, that it might be. Now in that column that you see there, so notice that I've calculated, okay, so in terms of the variance, okay, that you have there, so that's um, the data point, so 10 minus my mean, and then it's squared. Uh, so I put that all in there. So I'm using, you know, a table, you can use Excel, you can use whatever sheets, this one is, okay, numbers used from the iPad, okay, that I have uh, from Apple. So what I have there, you can see I have 58 data points. Um, my sum, okay, of all my returns is 651.7. So therefore, that means my mean, which would be the sum divided by the number of data points. So that's 11.236. Okay, so that's what you see there. And then my standard deviation that I have um, is basically the summation okay, of the variances divided by n minus one, all right? So that is uh, for a sample, okay? And not a population, because right? we have a fixed number of these, but we have quite a few of them. And you'll notice that the standard deviation is, is rather large. Now, you could have done all this by hand, but obviously if you have this many data points, it's good to use a spreadsheet or some other tool that you have. So that's what I ended up doing. Now. All of that, okay, of course, can be captured, okay, so within here, so that's what I have, and then my mean, okay, or my average is not very difficult to calculate for those. So with that, if I'm going to take that, and I'm gonna assume that it takes on this normal distribution, so if you remember, okay, so my normal distribution, so my normal distribution looks like this, okay, so if you remember, and now I'm assuming that my data, you know, falls within this particular kind of spread. All right, so my normal distribution. So within one standard deviation of about 68%, okay, and so on. So what I wanna be able to ask, okay, so if you have this, right, and you're gonna be assuming that it takes on more or less a normal distribution. Now, normal distribution is continuous, okay, so we technically don't have that. But I wanted to be able to ask and answer these types of questions now that I have my mean and my standard deviation. And I can certainly answer these, okay, on, again, assuming that it takes on a normal distribution. What is the probability that the return next year will be over 10%? So 10% or more, I can certainly do that. Um, I can ask what is the probability that the return will be negative 20% or maybe greater, okay, in terms of, of a loss, okay, so maybe, you know, I should say, you know, negative 20% or greater, okay, meaning a bigger loss, all right, so if I was thinking about these, this would have been, okay, what's the probability, okay, that I'm going to be um, over 10%, okay, here, what's the probability, okay, that x is actually going to be less than, okay, than that, all right, and then it asks me over the next 20 years, how many of those years would you expect to have a positive return? All right, again, of course, assuming that uh, the normal distribution actually holds. Okay, so positive return, so that means I'm gonna have to find okay, the probability that this is greater than zero and then see what the probability is and then span it over 20 years. So what if I wanted to ask that question? So let's try to answer these questions, okay, from here. So um, for this, because we have our standard deviation and we do have our mean, so this is 11.23, you know, so that is my mean. My standard deviation, okay, was 17 point, let's take a look here, 17.4, um, so I'm gonna put that within there. So those are my standard deviations. And now how can I calculate that? Well, we can calculate it by using either the Z-score, which transforms it to a standard normal distribution. We can approximate it ourselves. We can use decimals or graphing calculators. Okay, so we can use any of these tools, right, in order to do this. 
Now I've done several examples, okay? I'll put up a link up above there. But now for this one, okay, I'm gonna just utilize decimals and you can use whatever it is that you like, okay, for it. So I'll utilize decimals for this one, okay? We'll utilize the Z score for this one, all right? Okay, and then we'll kind of go back to the Z, uh, to the decimals for this one. So let's try these. Okay, so the first one, Okay, so within here, so I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna actually put up decimal, so I preloaded this, so here's my normal distribution, okay, or my standard uh, normal distribution, okay, that is mapped out there, so that's certainly not what we have. I put in all the returns, so R, so that list that you see there, those are actually all the returns over the 58 years. Then I did a mean, okay, which was 11.2, okay, so that's what we have there. And then my standard deviation, which is 17.455. Now, this differs than what I have there, and I'm assuming that I basically put okay, um, my last year, which is a guess, right? I put negative 26. Let's take a look um, what I actually put in there. Okay, so I put negative 27. All right, so let's do, return it back to 26, and we'll get the same values as we did on our spreadsheet. Okay, so there you have it. So 11.23 and so on. So now, let me put this in. So 11.23, standard deviation of 17.4, no, 2, all right. Okay, so let's see how that looks like. So there it is. It certainly looks, okay, that's what we have. And now what we want, so from those questions, so we want to find the cumulative so those questions were probability, next year will be over 10%. Okay, so over 10%, so that means my minimum is 10%, so over that. So notice that it is more than about 53% chance, okay? So that would have been my first one. So this, okay, so to answer that question, so it is about 53% probability. Okay, in order to do that. Now, the second one, what is the probability that the Z-score will be negative 20 or greater? So let's use our Z-score tables for this one. So in order to do that, so I need my Z-score, so negative 20 minus my mean, so 11.23 divided by my standard deviation, 17.42, I think that's what I used in that Desmos one. So let's see what that Z-score will be. Okay, so that is, all right, so 20 plus 11.23. So that's gonna be negative 31.23 divided by 17.42. 17.42, so that's gonna be negative one point, approximately negative 1.8, all right. So that's what we need, all right? So now I'm gonna go back to my table, my Z-score tables. So this again, you will find, okay, on either the web, okay, that you will have, um, you know, if you put in Z-scores or you find it in your textbook and statistics, okay, so this actually gives you, so I have now normalized, okay, so I have a normal distribution which is standardized, so around the mean which is zero, so that's what the Z-scores are. So we got negative 1.8, okay? So that would have been negative 1.8 is here, all right? It's zero, zero, because I rounded it off. So here's my probability. So probability is tiny. It's 3.593, so let's say 3.6%, okay? So that is super small. So the probability here was around 3.6%, which would be for a loss which is negative 20 or greater. Now this year, 2022, it looks like we're gonna have a loss of 20 or greater. So the probability was super small, okay, with regards to that if you take in the whole data set assuming that the, it held a normal distribution. Now just to double check this on decimals, so if I went in here, and I plugged in, so now we have, so our maximum 
was negative 20 and our minimum. So it's going to be negative infinity of the right out infinity. Okay, so notice it is indeed 3.6. Okay, so it's a 6.5. So approximately there for that distribution. So very small probability, right, that we have. Now, to answer the last question, um, over the next 20 years, how many of those years would you expect to have a positive return? So when you answer this type of question, so first you have to find out what the probability of having a positive return is. So that's greater than zero. So I will, so minimum is zero and maximum is positive infinity, but we're not going to get there. Okay, so the probability is 74%. All right, so 74% probability. So now that you know the probability, all right, so this is for the last one. It is 74% probability of having okay, positive returns. And now over the 20 years, assuming it's a normal distribution, that means out of the 20 years, okay, so 74%. So if you do that, so how many years? So 20 times um, 0 0.74. So that is approximately, you know, between 14 to 15 years. So 14 to 15 years. So notice it's, you know, 14.8 there. So almost 15 years that the returns would be positive. So that means probably about five or six of those years are going to have negative returns. Um, and that is amazing to be able to do. Now, of course, huge assumption that it's normal, normally distributed. Fortunately, the stock market, you know, good luck. You know, you never really know what will happen. But as you can see over the span of the many, many years that we have, you know, if, I, if you look at this table, um, it is quite often positive. Now, there aren't too many negatives, but when they come, sometimes they're pretty brutal, right? So we had, you know, I think the largest one, at least in here, was, you know, there was, notice there was a span from 2000 to 2002 where it was negative, 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 okay? So it was huge amounts of losses there. And then in 2008, okay, there was also negative 37. So a whopping, okay, almost 40% loss. Um, now this is really hard to sit through, right? So I mean, this year, I certainly do invest, okay, and it's been a really hard year to try to sit through and then stick to your plan, okay, as you're going through. But now we kind of have the math that we can actually see what these probabilities are. So a year like today, okay, or like this year, you know, doesn't come often, um, okay, kind of comes rarely, but it doesn't mean that probability is zero. It means it can certainly come. Now you can now say, you know, between ranges, whatever you want. If you wanted to find the probability between you know, arrange something which is, you know, respectable, okay? Let's say you wanted to get returns of between 5% and 10%, what the probability there is, you can calculate it, okay, through this. So this is taking a data set, so a sample, okay? And you have that data set, you create your mean, you create your standard deviations, and then from there, you can see what the probabilities are. Okay, that's just one way of being able to model something. Now, you're going to run into many other examples, but they're all done in a similar way. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you in a future video. Okay, take care, everybody.